Hi everyone, welcome to my guide for the updated Double Swing Barbarian. This is a build that I've played earlier in Season 2. Back then I already made a guide about this, I showed my planner. This is one of probably the fastest build actually in the game in terms of like speed leveling and speed farming. At least personally I have not played a faster build than this one. It is extremely good to level up to 100 and just blast through all of the content in the game right now. And with Abattoir of Zir coming out, a lot of people ask me for an update for this build. I don't expect this to be like the best build in Abattoir of Zir. Hoda Barb exists, so that is probably going to be the best. But I think it will definitely like hold up its own. It's going to be all right. And I want to give you a pointer on where you can go with this build. And the cool part about this build is that I actually played this entirely without shouts. So as you can see here, there are no shouts on the skill bar. This is how I played that build originally. However, for the high-end content, at least something like a challenging shout is not a bad idea. And some of those mobility skills like charge and leap are not exactly really useful. This was designed to be a very speed farmy build. And this is why those shouts were kind of like unnecessary or even, you know, detrimental. And in this case, for the high-end stuff, it is definitely worthwhile to actually add a bit of shout synergies there. But I want to go over the setup that I made and show you what this is all about. So we have a new default planner here. It looks like this. And I have all these different variants here. So we have the original with um, the leveling 1 to 50, 50 to 100, and then with unique. So they have like all the progression that you're going for. And the setup actually doesn't really change all too much for the high-end stuff as well. We just mostly focus on uh, more survivability, try to like, you know, squeeze out a bit of extra stuff and the Paragon changes a little bit because of the Tears of Blood glyph. So there's a new glyph that you're gonna get from the Out of Zier so that unlocks on Tuesday. Uh, by the time this video is out, it's probably uh, out already. And you wanna put this one in here and for this you have to uh, spend a lot of points to uh, get all these nodes as you can see here you have to fill out like all these points there and then it grows in radius later on so there is a bit of a paragon respect required here but in the grand scheme of things it's kind of like the same stuff uh, just i moved points around a little bit and you know i did some cuts here and there and i just try to make this build more durable so they can actually uh, go into our 12 year and survive but i'm gonna go over the existing setup uh, real quick um, as I mentioned, this is a no shouts double swing barbarian usually. So the way the double swing works is that you usually want to stun enemies to get resources back. You see this here. This is uh, enhanced double swing. This is kind of like a resource engine for the build. And there is some other stuff like unrelenting fury that gives you resources back when you hit a boss or when you kill an enemy. So this procs very often. And there's also berserk fury. You are prominently berserking on this build quite easily because of um, the furious double swing. So you trigger berserking once and then you just keep attacking all the time and you have like, really good fury generation you have the damage buffs from berserking there is stuff like aggressive resistance that gives you damage reduction like all these like berserking passives here basically help you out a lot and of course the paragon synergies berserking is really important for barbs right now there's basically no build that does not run berserking really because of how powerful it is also with some of those legendary notes so this is kind of like how you fuel this whole thing in the late game there's also tables will you uh, activate this with a uh, metamorphosis so preferably uh, rank 1 metamorphosis uh, so that you can use it more often and this allows you to refuel your energy or your, your fury as well so that you can just like permanently spam double swing and you see this here even on the boss fights uh, if you go to uh, one, one of these bosses here you can actually sustain your resources if you use Tibbot's will and this unrelenting and the extra recovery you see here you, you attack you can't stun a boss obviously so compared to regular fights you do have the downside that you actually don't regenerate so much fury but with Tibbot's will you can keep it up and then if you have a lot of fury you also get a huge damage multiplier from for example the Maradni's sword here so the more fury you have the more damage you deal there's also random resource procs for example and you want to try to always keep it up as much as possible so this is kind of like the main combo that makes the whole thing work and the rest of the aspects is either just like offensive more damage or defensive to survive so we have stuff like accelerating there's edge masters here's berserk gripping aspect and he has um, even audacity to get more stunts for example there's uh, also like like some other stunts that you can get in uh, those setups here for example uh, with um, the anemia aspect so when you hit bleeding enemies you can get some stunts but in the late game especially with tibbles will in the mix you don't need to go with that ham on stunts anymore so you wrote mostly rely on the tibbles will plus metamorphosis combo plus those two resource aspects here and you're generally fine. Also a really strong unique item here is the Tusk Helm of Joids the Mighty. This uh, has almost Shaco level uh, like power basically. I did actually some uh, calculations on this 
that I can show here where I compared those to helms for barbs. So for this build in particular, I basically summed up all of the perks that you get from either the Harlequin Crest or from the Tusk Helm. And uh, it basically comes down to a Harlequin Crest being around 41% DPS, 36% toughness, and the Tusk Helm being almost the same DPS and a bit less toughness. So that's basically where we're at. So just like all this set up here. But in general, Tuscan of George the Mighty is a really powerful item, especially for this build, I believe. And if you don't have access to a Harlequin Crest, you can easily run this. And uh, it does have, you know, some other perks like the attack speed, for example, and stuff like that. That also just makes the build more smooth. Ultimately, you want to use the Shaco if you have one. So this is just um, like a quick overview here. I'm not going to go that much more into detail of this. But there is also the uber unique variant here so you can check exactly what i changed here if you have all these uber uniques available you want to get equipped the harlequin crest you want to equip the doombringer for the extra life and you want to equip the grandfather for the extra crit damage because this build also crits quite a bit and once you start stacking this up here with like the rings and the glove uh, you have a decent amount of crit chance and grandfather is a really powerful especially stat stick for this build so it's definitely worth dropping some of those offensive powers and moving stuff around a little bit and you'll see here that um yeah you just make a few adjustments basically for example dropping your audacity so you drop basically all the stunts eventually and you just kind of like slash your way through it for the abba 12 zia in particular it is also quite important to actually hit a high enough armor value so you can see this here this build baseline in AOZ has um, yeah, something like almost 12k armor with perfect gear so this is not enough you want to have around 14k or like 13.7k or so so you have to run the disobedience aspect so you put this here on the amulet just to make sure that even with a few stacks we can easily cap out and you know you don't necessarily have planar level gear so your armor might be a bit lower than this anyway so maybe like 11k or so so in that case you definitely have to stack up disobedience a bit and you also have to be mindful that when you walk into a new pack especially on the high levels of Abba 12 Zier, that you have to stack up disobedience first to actually be fully protected against physical damage. But this is also where some of the stuns come in. For example, there's ground stomp. So you can just walk up to a pack, ground stomp, everything is stunned for four seconds. And this allows you to do your thing and then get all of your damage reductions up there. And there's also the might aspect. So you can, for example, like left click sometimes uh, just to like move around after lunging strike here and proc this effect and for example with uh, uber unix you can yeah you have like this setup here you have even less armor so it's kind of hard to like you know try to fit in all this this armor basically once you have unix tusk helm or the shako but both of these helms are just too good to give up in my opinion they are really powerful for this build but if you want to you could try to run a normal helm and just have the armor fully stacked up and actually have another defensive mod or have something like anemia again to stun enemies. So that could also work out pretty well, I believe, if you want to be a bit more on the defensive side without having to run uh, the civilians aspect. Now I'm going to go over the skill tree really quick. I mentioned the lunging strike. We have the one that gives you berserking. This is one of the berserking triggers. This is useful for the task helm. And then you have the infinite berserking from double swing. Uh, there's a ground stomp that gives you a fury and also stuns longer. This is just a useful crowd control tool and again with the enhanced double swing you get fury back so you can use this as like a fury generation tool uh, and then we have uh, two extra skills here so that is kind of like part of the progression from going from easy to high-end content uh, here we have charge and leap just to go faster there's also more fury there's also vulnerable it's kind of like nice to have these but in higher-end content in t100s for example you can drop the leap and then just go with Challenging Shout here. That also gives you extra life. Damage reduction is kind of nice. And for AOZ, it can go even more on damage reduction. And the users don't really need Charge and Leap. It's not a type of content where I need to go very fast. So I drop both of these effects. And it can still trigger your um, Berserking, for example, from Steel Grasp. There's also a Berserking trigger. So use a Steel Grasp. You get Berserking there. And then it just, you know, perpetually attack. And you, you perpetuate this uh, berserking effect of double swing anyway and we can get in iron skin as well so you have the stun you have the iron skin you have the challenging shout and the idea is that you know use this to engage a pack or whenever you want to like refill your resources then you use a challenging shout this can also be used to like as you walk into a pack and then attack a little bit get up your disobedience so this is like useful on engage especially when a lot of enemies are hitting you and then as you fan out the pull and you might have taken a bit of damage then you pop iron skin so that you get the barrier and then this barrier will also heal you up because of this upgrade here so this is a pretty powerful combo and uh, this allows you to stay alive on the higher tiers but you have to be mindful these are relatively long cooldowns this is 14 seconds this is 25 seconds so you can't use them all the time this is not you know 
like with shout synergies like the aspects on the ring and the, sh the glyph like the the shouts will not be up that long so you have to be careful with this generally i don't think it should really be in trouble fighting like small pulls of like you know normal monsters so you can let those shouts cool down and the iron skin cool down and then you just use it against the elites for example um, the rest here is basically just okay steel grasp and a bunch of passives so there's like the image passives uh here's the uh, 45 passives uh, he has like the one-handed stuff and uh, healing. So basically a pretty normal barb stuff with the movement speed here and defense passes. And finally, we have Unbridled Rage. Um, this kind of stays the same throughout most of the progression besides the skill changes. As you can see here, most of these passives are basically the same. Uh, nothing really changes. The only big thing that changes is that if you start out with a Barbarian right now and you want to level this, then uh, you want to go a bit more on like the future generation, for example, with this here in the early game. And you also want to go for unconstrained in the early game until you actually fully manage your resources uh, with some of the aspects and with, you know, better uh, resource cost reduction and resource generation on your rings and all that stuff. And eventually you go unbridled rage. In the early game, you don't want to do that if you level this. But for about 12 the year, for T100 dungeons, everything you see, the skill tree is actually pretty much unchanged. Just a few points move around here. And for the Paragon, it is also pretty much the same across the board. So um, you see here, this is um, the normal setup. It is also stays the same all the way. And uh, this is also the, it's the same setup here in Avatar of Zero, starting out without a Tears of Blood glyph. And it's only that after you get the glyph, you can select this here, you have to like adjust a few things. But basically the way this works is that we have um, the Carnage board. The Carnage board is like by far the best board to put the new Tears of Blood glyph, I think, because first of all, you have a lot of nodes in this radius and you also have the two dream like combo of a rare node so they can buff. So first there is uh, the Fierce node that gives you damage while berserking which is extremely powerful on the bar because of um, the Blood Rage board here. So damage while berserking translates into a damage modifier, the multiplier, and you can see here we have 93% damage multiplier from the items that we have stacked and from um, the nodes that we have stacked. So you want to try to pick this up everywhere. This is extremely good to buff with this uh, rare buffing effect of the Tears of Blood Glyph. And there's also Brash that gives you damage reduction from close enemies. And basically, as you rank up the Glyph, that becomes more and more potent because if you stack damage reduction from a single modifier, this can get pretty wild here. I can get eventually a 30% close damage reduction from that thing and like 70% damage while berserking. So this is uh, pretty insane. And then this multiply here also like starts scaling up basically. So we have that. You also have um, only uh, three other glyphs. As you can see, there's very few glyphs in the setup that you need to level. And we have a lot of legendary notes that are useful here. So up here is Decimator and the Iron Glyph. Iron Glyph gives you damage while berserking yet again. So you want to try to stack this up as much as possible. Uh, here's the Ambidextrous uh, glyph that gives you uh, the extra damage to one-handed and then the uh, magic nodes so you can stack up a bunch of armor there which is kind of nice and we also have um, a wallbringer here that gives you the fortify so later on this is like your, your main source of fortify and you will constantly be fortified you can profit from damage reduction by fortified mods you can profit from the passive on the skill tree here with counter offensive and defensive stance so there are some perks to fortify here there's also extra maximum fury that buffs our damage for the remaladnies and a bunch of other stuff with the territorial glyph that gives you damage to close targets and uh, damage reduction on close. And finally, the Blood Rage board here. Uh, even though we don't necessarily have bleeding in the build late game, especially once you, for example, acquire a Doombringer, you're probably going to drop the Berserk Ripping aspect that gives you bleed. And you don't really care about the bleed that much. It's only really useful for stacking disobedience, but you attack relatively fast. You can still grasp enemies to you. You can stun them. So you can relatively safely stack up disobedience either way. And I don't think it really need bleeds in a build and so we have just this effect for the extra damage multiplier that you get at the end so this is what a board looks like and you just like change a few points around in the end when you rank up the glyph because it increases in radius you need to like fill up even more core stats around here but uh, as you can see the setup doesn't really change all that much in the end and uh, all of the other rare notes there's a bunch of other stuff that is kind of useful you just pick up mostly a lot of armor you pick up a bit of life uh, maybe some res some damage reduction and uh, damage while berserking most importantly so we have all this damage while berserking here there's also carnage with the attack speed i forgot to mention and uh, yeah fury more fury damage resists etc 40 vampiric powers they look like this so this is like a rather defensive setup as you can see we have both resilience and undying in this uh, setup here we have prey on the weak to make stuff vulnerable all the time 
to get up with metamorphosis. Uh, if you can, you want to keep metamorphosis at level one because like this, you can trigger it more often with the table's will, which is really useful. So if you have not leveled this, do not level this, but uh, it is kind of fine if you have leveled it. So you can also play around this. You don't have to make a new character, but it would be more optimal to keep it at level one. And we have uh, Ravenous here. So like this, you get a lot of attack speed. You have the defense and the healing. You have uh, the unstoppable, and you can also make stuff vulnerable with your metamorphosis. You just like dash through enemies a little bit, and then you have the perma unstoppable. And yes, Prey on the Weak is an additive damage buff. It's not really like a boost, but the vulnerable itself is, you know, kind of premium on the barb. So it's not that easy to get vulnerable, and this makes it extremely easy to just make stuff vulnerable. It also has a bunch of other perks, like for example, Decimator here. So sometimes you overpower, sometimes you um, make enemies vulnerable, and you get those damage buffs. As for the stat priorities, uh, I'm gonna go over them real quick. Most importantly, you need to have uh, at least four rolls of resistances on your gear to make this work. So usually there's three on the boots, and I also put two on the chest so that we can run uh, free skulls in our jewelry you could get away with only one res roll on the chest and then you can maybe put uh, like uh, some some other colored gems here to make up for the resist resistances but it's not really recommended i think because you need that armor so you don't really want to go in with too little armor and then get absolutely blasted when your disobedience is down it is pretty important to stack your armor up to around 14k this will be even harder to do if you remove the skulls so i definitely don't recommend that but if you have a chest that you know ha has like really great stats and only one of the resistances you could consider that then on the glove it looks like this you want double swing and then crit attack speed and there's not really all too much else besides that so i just put like a hit here uh, that can like trigger some effects or you can also do like strength all stats uh, there's like chance to gain resources that's also an option so there's a bunch of stuff there uh, and we have the audacity mod here you can also replace this with another utility mod for example anemia again if you get in some bleed we have berserk gripping there for example so that could work that depends a little bit on your preferences i just put this one uh, we have the ghost walker i think this is going to be useful but this can also be replaced for example you can move uh, this down this is a utility mod this can go to the boots you don't need ghost walker for this in my opinion but i think it is just really useful to actually like position yourself in the right place especially with a very small AOE of double swing i don't really want to give this up yeah the edge masters accelerating etc i mentioned this for the stats you want to have all stats strength damage while working again this is a damage multiplier so you want to have exactly those three if you can and then the fourth one uh, is a bit open this can be close which is the best in my opinion this can be uh, core skill damage for example and uh, you maybe you have some other stats as well that uh, rolled on a gear that could be of use you know that could be crit that could be vulnerable but they're not as good as this same for this weapon you want to have the sword there but you can also go for a mace and then for example get in um, the valop passive here so instead of the sword you can do this it's kind of hard to like free up those points here you can remove slaying strike for example which is not as powerful as Wallop, but then you have to also go with a mace there. And uh, then we have the same stats here. For the rings, we have, uh, most importantly, you want resource generation. Uh, this is just really like to fuel the engine and then create damage of a zerking. Life is just like pretty straightforward, I guess. And for the amulet, it looks like this. Uh, you want the armor for sure where you can get it. So this means a chest and uh, the amulet. And then pure cost reduction, really important. I kept the movement speed. It's not really required. If you feel too squishy, maybe you can try to go for one of the damage reduction mods, just like damage reduction from clothes, damage reduction from anything really. Uh, could be pretty helpful here. Uh, and as the best passive, I put counter offensive. It's not really such a strong passive. So this is kind of like a, a very offensive choice here. But I think barbs in general are pretty durable. So they should probably not have too much trouble in our 12s here. So I just put offensive passive. Because the build doesn't really have like this insane damage output as like Hoda buffs, for example. I think you kind of want to try to get everything you can. But you can also go to just like Fury Cost Reduction, Armor, and like two defensive mods, for example, to help you out here. And that's also it for the guide. I hope you enjoyed this. I have my double swing barb still like prepared and ready. So I can jump in and try it out and just see how it will go but i think it will be all right obviously not as powerful as some of the top builds but it will be quite fun to see how far we can push it and i think it will be very fun this is what i have here for this guide i hope you enjoyed this this is my update for the other 12 z variant and just like another refresher on the build itself which is one of the most fun builds i've played so far so i'm actually quite excited to jump in there at some point and see how it will go hope you like this video here and i'll see you guys in the next one